Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Root Beer here, looking at more of our Canadian Open paper from 2016. And we're going to be starting the Part C questions. Just a reminder, these are the questions that require full written explanations. We're going to have to show all our work here. Uh, so C1 is what we're looking at. A sequence of three numbers, A, B, C, forms an arithmetic sequence if the difference between successive terms in the sequence is the same. That is, when b minus a is equal to c minus b, usually I prefer to write the sequence as a, a plus d, a plus 2d, and so on, but maybe they're giving this, uh, this form for a specific reason. d is usually what's called the common difference. Okay. Um, so arithmetic sequences, they pop, just like geometric sequence, they pop up from time to time. They are a good thing to know on contests. They are a great go-to when, when making up problems. And what have we got? A part, uh, the sequence 2B8 forms an arithmetic sequence, determine B. So that shouldn't be a problem for us. So 2B8, well that tells me that 8 minus B should be equal to B minus 2. So the form they gave us is quite nice and simple to work with. Uh, so bring the 2 over to the other side. 2 is equal to, 2B is equal to 10. B is equal to 5. Okay, not much work to show there. That was probably worth one, maybe two marks. Okay. Uh, one mark for the five, one mark for showing your work and the rearranging and that sort of a thing. All right, B. Given a sequence, A, B, C, let D1 be the non-negative number to increase or decrease B by so that the result is an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Let D2 be the positive number to increase or decrease C by so that the, same res so that the result is an arithmetic sequence. Okay. For example, the three-term sequence 3, 10, 13, that's not arithmetic. But if we decrease 10 to 8, then we get 3, 8, 13, that is. So D1 is equal to 2. We decreased by 2. If we change the third term to 17, so increase it by 4, D2 is equal to 4, we get an arithmetic sequence. All right, all right. Suppose the original three-term sequence is 1, 13, 17. Determine D1 and D2. So if I have a, b, and c, uh, what we want is c minus b is equal to b minus a. But that won't necessarily be true until we change things. So uh, I can't really fit these into a formula because I don't know if we're adding or subtracting d1. So let's just say this. We've got 3, 13, and 17, was it? Oh, 1, 13, and 17. So, um, well, if, if C minus B is equal to B minus A, what's the relationship between C and A? Well, C plus A is equal to 2B. We even sort of used that up here. So, uh, for D1, we'll get uh, A plus C is equal to 1 plus 17, which is 18. So, 2B is equal to 18. B should be 9. So 13 minus 9 is equal to 4, and that should be my D1. Okay, so I decrease 13 by one by 4 to 9, I get 1, 9, 17. That's an arithmetic sequence. Okay, we also have, um, uh, so if we're starting with 1, 13, and 17, B minus A is 13 minus 1, which is 12. So C minus B needs to be equal to 12. So C minus 13 needs to be equal to 12. So C needs to be equal to 25. 25 minus 17 is equal to 8. So D2 is equal to 8 because that's the positive value. We're not saying 17 minus 25 because they specifically say D1 and D2 need to be positive. So I would just summarize that. D1 is 4. D2 is 8. Okay, nice, clear, easy to mark. And we have just one part remaining here, so C. Define D1, D2 as in part B. For all three-term three sequences, prove that 2D1 is equal to D2. Interesting. So we had that in our last example, 4 and, and 8, and we even have that in their example, 2 and 4. So why would that be true? Okay. So let... A, B, well, no, let's, um, 
Let's let A, B, and C represent the, the proper sequence. Let A, B, C be a three-term sequence. Okay. Then A plus C over 2 is equal to B where A, B, C is arithmetic. So D1 is, I really don't want to use absolute values here, but we'll say D1 is the absolute value of B minus B is B minus A plus C over 2. Now, uh, we also have B plus B minus A should be equal to our C value. The C, if it were for... for uh, arithmetic sequence a b little c so that's uh, 2b minus a is equal to c uh, so d2 is equal to c minus c which is equal to c minus b 2b minus a so that's C plus A minus 2B. But that's 2 times C plus A over 2 minus B. And that's 2 times D1. More or less, because I mean technically, so I just go back and rewrite it like this. But there we go. Or I guess if you're uncomfortable factoring out like that, you could say 2 times D1 is 2 times A plus C over 2 minus B. And then the 2 can come in. I mean, if you want to write an intermediate step, 2 is the absolute value of 2. And the thing we're using here is absolute value is multiplicative, which you could even write down if you wanted to. But uh, that's, that's equal to D2. So there we go. Well, that, that wasn't uh, bad at all. No, not bad at all. Uh, I thought it was going to be a little weird. I was hesitant to put the absolute values in there just because they're not easy to algebraically manipulate. But I guess I shouldn't have been worried because we just needed to multiply by 2. And that wraps up C1. So we still got three more Part C questions to go. Feel free to join me for C2 if you're so inclined. Or you can jump ahead to C3 or C4. Please do try and give these questions a try before uh, coming and watching my videos or reading the solutions online because practice really does make perfect. And as a great educator once told me, math is not a spectator sport. So you guys have been wonderful. I will see you for more of the 2016 Open in the next video. Take care.